In our last video, we looked at how to insert images into our HTML code by using SVG. We also learned that we could use CSS style sheets as another way of getting images into screens. Putting images into web pages is something that is done all the time. And a lot of the time, we're working with square or rectangle images and putting them into the page is no problem. And if the text lines up aligned with the edge of a video, then everything looks great and there's no problem. But in this video, I want to show you how to insert a couple of irregular shaped images. And then what I want to do is to show you how we can make the text conform to those images. The way we're going to do this in our HTML file, let's come to the Constitution file, and I'm going to scroll down to about, here we are at Article 2, Section 1, and this is the article of the Constitution that deals with the Office of the President. And we have some paragraphs in here, one, two, three, and then four. And what I want to do is to click in between paragraphs three and four and insert an image. So I have an image tag and our location for this is in our images folder. And it's an image called the Oval Office. This is an image I obtained through Wikipedia. Then I took it into GIMP and reduced its size then I cropped it to the shape of an oval, and then I made the corners around the oval transparent so that we could make the text conform to the shape of the oval. First, I'm going to give our alt text here, just call this Oval Office. And we'll scroll down, and here is the file that I just placed in this page. The text does not wrap up beside it. And the reason for that is because we have to float this image. Right now, the image is appearing on the left side of the page, but that's not because of CSS or anything other than what's called that principle of normal flow, that the browser takes into account everything that it sees from top to bottom. And as it finds it, it places it in the page unless there's some CSS rule stopping us and it will put it in line from top to bottom, and it'll also put it on the left side of the page unless the language that we are expressing in our file is one of the languages that would cause you to read from right to left. So that's the reason the oval is here. It's not because of styling or anything, but I am going to change the styling, and I do want the image to stay on the left I'm going to give this a class of Oval Office. And in this, give this three rules. The first is to float, and I'm going to tell it to float left. Now, there's only two ways that you can float in CSS. And that is you can float to the left side of the page, or you can float to the right side of the page. But whenever you float it to the left or to the right, then the text that comes below it can move up beside that image. That's the benefit of floating left and right. Float it left, and we're going to tell this though to shape this text on the outside. We're going to tell it to conform to an ellipse. Put a little bit of padding on the right side of that image so that the text doesn't come up too close to the image itself. And that's all I need. We'll save that. Of course, there's no change yet, and that's because in the image I had not added the class to this. Class equals Oval Office. And now when I press Control S to save, now you can see that the text comes up beside the image and by having the padding on the right side of the image, I have some clear white space that makes things look a little bit balanced. And all of the text is conforming to the shape of the object itself. 
doing this in CSS and HTML has been a very standard practice for a long time. This has never been a mystery. However, what designers have wished for for a long time is for there to be a way that we could put an image in the middle of the page and have the text conform to it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to do it in our Declaration of Independence file. And what we're going to do right in this paragraph right here, we hold these truths to be self-evident. In this big paragraph, I'm going to place an image of the Liberty Bell and then have the text around the image of the Liberty Bell conform to its shape. So to do this, I come to the declaration file and I will come down to this big paragraph. We hold these truths to be self-evident. The first thing I need to do with this paragraph is to wrap all of it in a set of div tags. This is going to be div class centered image. I'm also going to take out these paragraph tags that we find at the start and end. And I want to find a place in the paragraph that I calculated earlier. And it's the place that comes right after where it says, and accordingly all experience hath shown, comma. And right there after the comma, I'm going to press the Enter key a couple of times and separate the paragraph in half like this. I'm going to take the first half of the paragraph, wrap it in div tags. This is going to be another div. So we have a nested div with the class of left. And this one down here, we're going to highlight that, wrap it in a div tag with a class of right. Span all of this text that's in here. That paragraph and then this one. And then I will come between the two paragraphs with my image element. We'll find Liberty Bell in the images folder. And be careful here because there are three. There's the Liberty Bell transparent background. That's the one we want. But you'll also see that there's one called left half and another called right half. And I'll explain what those are about later. But right now, let's be sure and get the one that's called transparent background. From my alt tag, I'll just type Liberty Bell. And I'll create an ID called Liberty Bell. And control S to save. Now you can see the image on our screen, but it's definitely not where we need it to be yet. Everything else that will position this image in the middle of the screen and then cause the text to wrap around the shape, this irregular shape of the bell, is all going to be done in CSS. So we go back to our style sheet. First one we'll start with is the class of centered image. This is that big div block that we created around all of that paragraph. So we're going to position it relative to its containing block. We need a rule now for the image itself. So that's an ID of Liberty Bell. The width of the Liberty Bell image here is 150 pixels. The height of 193 pixels. We're going to position this image within its containing block by using the absolute value. And we want it to be eight pixels from the top of that containing block. And we'll make it left 50% over from the edge of that containing block. 
Now, there won't be 50% from the margin of the page, but it will be 50% from the margin of the text or the margin of the containing element, which again is that main element. With the margin left of this to be a negative 80 pixels. And again, we're going to display this as a block. We need to declare a class for left and right classes. And the width here of these two need to be something less than 100%, so it's safe to just make it 49%. We'll justify the alignment so that as much as possible, the text along the left and right margins of each of those two columns will be aligned, except where they have to conform to the shape of the bell. So we've given rules to both left and right. And these are rules that are common between both of these classes, but we have a rule now that is unique to just the left class. And this is going to be to float left. Then we need a rule for just the right half, and this is going to be to float right. And then we need to add a couple of pseudo classes. We'll have the class of left, with a before, and the class of right with a before. Content is just two quotation marks with no space in between them, and that means to put nothing there. But we have to declare that. The width here of 80 pixels, and the height of 160 pixels. And again, we have some style rules that are unique just to the left before pseudo class, and this is to float to the right. We we'll use here the property of shape outside, and this is where we cause the text to form the shape of the object. We're going to go looking for an image that has the shape that the left half of this paragraph is going to need to look at in order to build the shape that it needs to conform to. Images, and then the Liberty Bell, and here we will use the Liberty Bell, the left half. What I did was to take the image of the Liberty Bell, and in GIMP, I just took the bell and then split it in half, and then so I have the left half, and then I have the right half, and the left half will tell the text that's on the left side of this bell what shape it needs to conform to. And the same way, the text on the right will look at the shape of the bell that I made from the right side, and that's how it will know what shape it needs to be. We need to do the same thing for the block that's on the right. We need to have a class of right before. We're going to float this one to the left, and the shape outside is going to be URL, images, Liberty Bell, and we're going to make sure we get the one that's for the right. If I've typed everything correctly, then when I save this, we should see some movement on our screen. So, Control S, and there you see it. The M Liberty Bell is positioned in the middle of the page. I had to take the paragraph and divide it into two columns. That's how I knew where to stop this. And then the right side of the text conforms to the right half of that bell image and comes down to here. And since we put these in div blocks, then all of our unordered list then begins on a new section down below. This is how we do it.